What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question three in the sixth grade. No, not the sixth grade. Okay, start over from here. What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Uh, today we're going to tackle question three in the eighth grade math questions that North Carolina released this past school year. We can see that Susan recorded the time she ate dinner and the number of calories she consumed during dinner for six consecutive days. The results are shown in this table, and we're supposed to find which best describes the association between the time Susan ate dinner and the number of calories she consumed. In order to do a question like this, we'll need to know how to look for and find an association, or you might have heard the word correlation, and in order to do this, we'll need to graph a few points in the process. So I first want to talk about what each of our answer choices mean. A positive association means that as time increases, calories increases. So if this were a positive association, the later Susan ate dinner, the more she'd be eating. Negative works the opposite way. As one of these goes up, the other one goes down. So if this were a negative association, as Susan ate later, she would have eaten less, or she would have eaten fewer calories. Irrational doesn't even make sense in this context. Um, almost none means that we can't find any association. And um, I'll talk about what our points on a graph would look like for each of A, B, and D. But let's just go ahead and say right now that it's not choice C. Now, I'm going to have to use the magic of editing to magically make a graph appear that we can work with. Ta-da! Here's a graph. We can go ahead and graph some of the information from this problem. Um, I'm going to start by labeling my axes. I'll make my x-axis time. And I can go ahead and make my y-axis calories. So if this were 4 p.m., 5, 6, 7, and 8 p.m., and let's say that each of these squares is 200 calories. It's not really the size of the squares that I'm working with that's the issue. It's more just that I graph the points correctly and correctly identify what pattern I can um, see from it. So to start with, let's go ahead and graph my points. First one, I've got 4 p.m., 600 calories. That would be 4 p.m., 600 calories right here. 5.30 p.m., 750 calories, so right between 5 and 6. And on the upper side of the 600 to 800 box, next is 6.30 p.m. and 700 calories. Next is 5.30 p.m. and 900 calories. Next is 7.30 p.m. and 400 calories. And now 8.30 p.m. and 800 calories. So now that I've graphed all my points, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for some kind of line that I can draw. And my first question is, do my points even look like they make a line, or do they look more like a cloud? Now, North Carolina, they put only seven ordered pairs here from time and calories uh, for us to graph because they thought that would make it easier. But really... I think it just makes it harder for us to actually tell what's going on here and to tell if there is an association or a correlation or not. But I had to actually go ahead and look up the answer, and I'll get there in a bit. But these points, when we put them all on this graph, they look a lot more like a cloud than a line. And I can actually see how I could draw a line down here, but I could also draw a line here. There's a couple different lines that I can make, and because there's a couple different lines that I could make... Wait, never mind, they did six points, not seven. Sorry, that's my bad. That's on Mr. W. Because uh, there's no clear line that I can make, I would say that this looks more like a cloud, and that if I'm going to bring back my answers, if it's a choice between positive, negative, irrational, and almost none, forgive me for using the same transparency, I'm going to go with almost none. 